you know, you can call me crazy if you want, but I think oscillators and blinking lights are some of the most fun you can have with electronics. Hey, what's happening guys? Today I'm going to show you how to build a really simple oscillator circuit using four components. We're not counting the little pieces of wire. And if you notice up here, I've got a business card for Cyber City Circuits. You remember those guys are the ones that sent us that cool LED dice kit last week. Well, Cyber City Circuits is now a sponsor of Learn Electronics, so I'd like to welcome them aboard and have you guys check out their website if you would cybercitycircuits.com not only do they have those subscription boxes but they've got toolkits and components so give them a check out you might find something you like anywho back to the matter at hand we have this simple circuit so what have we got here we've got the blinking lights using a, a potentiometer here basically as a variable resistor and we can adjust the blink and light ratio something like that I mean that's not even as slow as it'll go here I, mean, I can really crank it make it slow and I can make it super quick as well of course I can change the capacitor and it will get even faster. If we take a look up here at the frequency counter, pardon me, I'm going to cough. You can get a little idea of our speed there. And I can change it and uh, tweak it just a little bit more, make it a little faster. So that is uh that dot is on megahertz. So we're looking at what 161k there. That's pretty cool. And we can take it way down. This this counter won't even recognize how slow it'll go. But anyway, how did I do it? Well, this is a uh quad 2 input NAND gate Schmidt trigger also known as the CD4093BE let's go over to the computer and take a look at the data sheet and I'll show you how we put this together here's the data sheet, data sheet for the CD4093 we can come down here and you can take a look at some of the important info this is a, uh, a nice IC because it has noise immunity. So if you're using this in an RF type chip, it is uh, a little more immune to noise than some of the other ones. It also has no limit on rise and fall times. That's why we can get multiple second ons and offs. And it is also symmetrical. So we got a 50% duty cycle good for up to 20 volts I am running it at seven and a half volts there's no reason to run it that hard but if we come over here and we take a look here is you know standard 14 pin chip pin 14 is our positive voltage pin 7 is our ground we're using only one of the NAND gates right here so everything else I have tied to ground so nothing is left floating all right you with me so far we'll take a little roll down here and you can see how the NAND gate works if you're unfamiliar with uh, logic circuits if A and B are both true the NAND gate outputs a false if either one of them is uh, false you'll get a true then it flips it again through a Schmidt trigger so it's pretty neat and what you end up with 
is right here. You end up getting a, uh, a very nice square wave out of it. Just like that. So if you want to build an oscillator, we just come and roll down here till we find our sample circuits. And right here, we have our A-stable multi-vibrator. We have our pin 1, our A input, tied high. Pin 2 is tied low through a capacitor. And our output, pin 3, has feedback going through that resistor back into pin 2. And if we blow this up enough so that we can read it, you can get the formula for the timing right there. So you can find this for just about any IC. It's going to have some sample circuits on there. And that will give you a nice place to get yourself started. Okay. So you've seen the data sheet. sheet. You've seen it in action. Yeah, here's my layout. It's pretty simple. I tried to keep it as neat as possible for you guys. This is a 100 microfarad polarized capacitor. If we swap that out, let's just make sure I'm saying what is correct. Yeah, it's 100. Here is a 22 microfarad. This should give us about a five times increase in our oscillation since it's one fifth. Now, to my eye, that looks like it is on solid. Let's hook the frequency counter back up to it here. I'll roll you guys up there to get a look. Looks like we're about 215 kilohertz. Looking good. Easy circuit. It doesn't have to be this particular chip. You can do this with any type of NAND gate, and it'll work just fine. All you need is that capacitor discharging the ground and a feedback resistor. I'm using the potentiometer. But I don't know how well you can see. Let's zoom in here. You see this leg over here? This one right here? It's not connected to anything. The yellow is connected to the wiper pin right there, inside there. And the blue is connected to this leg. So I'm simply using that potentiometer as a variable resistor. I like how that looks in the camera. To my naked eye, it looks like a solid on LED. Now I can see it blinking. You guys want to take a look at the waveform? Of course you do. We're nerds. That's what we do. Hang on. I say if you're going to go nerd, you might as well go full nerd. So I have busted out the Tektronics 468. This is actually a uh, very, very early digital storage oscilloscope, but it's got that nice warm cathode ray glow too. Just got it calibrated there so everything is hunky dory. And then we'll come over here and hook her up to our circuit and see what there is to see kind of pretty waveform we're experiencing. Allow me a moment to adjust.
that took a minute to get everything dialed in. But she's not bad. She's definitely not exactly a square wave, but it is. I mean, I mean, if you were to take a look there and you could see that rise and fall time, they are pretty much on and off. But since we have that capacitor, which is tied to that resistor, we're going to get a little charge and discharge there, no matter what. I've activated the storage mode, and through that rolling shutter, you should be able to see we are at 0.31 microseconds per division. So we do that. I'm sorry, time volts off. No, we are actually at 0.16 microseconds. Hold on, milliseconds. I have to come over here and shade this so I can see which light is lit. So 0.16 milliseconds per division. And then if we turn our time off and bring our voltage on, 0.31 down, that's it, volts per division. So that's got it cranked up pretty good there to the point where you can almost not see any oscillation. That's better. Now you can see it. And if we come back over here and I adjust our time, get it to trigger. Actually, it says it is triggered. Trigger light is lit. Just doesn't like it that slow. Trying to get the trigger again. Yeah, it just won't trigger there. Anyway, so today, just a little bit of fun with a simple oscillator using three components 4093 IC, a capacitor, and a resistor. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to Cyber City. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. Dollar a month is all I ask, and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here and there's a link to it down below.